Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the interview room. You know, we're living in a time where the innocence of youth continues, continues to be victimized. Tonight, I have with me uh, Brandy Neal, mother of Michael Vaughn, a.k.a. Monkey. I absolutely have fallen in love with this little guy. And I've come to get to know the family a little bit. And Brandy has been kind enough uh, to come on. Uh, Tyler's been tied up, uh, dad. And so, uh, but this is a really good family. And I spoke with the authorities today in Fruitland, uh, Idaho. And Brandy has agreed to come on like she has on a couple other stations and programs to talk about her little guy. And so we're going to do that tonight. We're going to talk about Monkey. And his name is going to give you an insight into his little personality. And also, this good family needs your help. The Fruitland Police Department needs your help. The world needs to get involved in this little guy's disappearance and help find him. So welcome this evening and let's get started. I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Chris. I am uh, grateful that you're here. And uh, it's been fun getting to know you <laughs> and your and Tyler and your family uh, and in terms of our conversation. So um, I know he's tied up, uh, which is, you know, he's got all the other children and other <laughs> right behind him in the door. Uh, so, um, you know, first of all, I want to... Um, you know, just extend my uh, sincere uh, condolence in terms of what you guys are experiencing. And I, I want to tell everybody, take a look at below there where it says find Michael at fruitland.org. I'm going to keep that going through our conversation here. Okay. Because I want everybody to know that's a, um, they can go there uh, and they can report any information they may have uh, about your sweet little monkey. Now I have permission to call him monkey, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when you, when you described him, I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, how are you, first of all, holding up? Remember your job is to do what? 
breathe. Breathe. That's right. That's that's what mama needs to do. Okay. And you guys have four kids, right? I mean, two and two. Okay. Yes. And Michael and, and Ty, um, you and Tyler are Michael's biological parents. Okay. Right. Okay. And you guys uh, have been together for quite some time. Uh, and, you know, uh, your uh, Tyler's dad is a former Navy guy, right? A, uh, oh, oh, excuse me. My dad. Oh, your dad. For, that's right. I'm my, sorry. Yeah, my dad. Your dad was 30 <laughs> something years in the Navy? Um, Pretty close, I believe. Yes. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah. That's Long a lot. Time. <laughs> okay. So with, help me understand, uh, let's get to know Brandy in terms of what you feel comfortable with. Uh, and at any time, you know, if, because we talked at any time, if you need to say, you know what, I, I'm going to take a pass on that one. It doesn't mean there's anything hidden or anything like that. You know, let's get that out. And they, I like to make sure that everybody understands that you have, you guys have no hidden agenda. You have been 100% cooperative with the cops, with the FBI, with the card team, with everything going on. Uh, even in, up into, uh, you know, polygraphs, everything is all cooperation, 100% with the authorities. Okay. So I can say that and people will go, well, that's a couple of questions we wanted to answer right away uh, because it's true. Okay. I spoke to the authorities today at Fruitland Police Department, as you know, okay. Yeah. And uh, you're good to go. Everything's moving in the right direction. The investigation is ongoing a thousand miles an hour. These guys and gals are 100% committed to helping find little monkey. Okay. That said, okay, let's get to know you just a little. And I already know that Tyler wears a Boston you know, baseball cap. So he's good to go. You know, <laughs> those of you in the Boston area, you know, uh, and you're a, what, what fan, what team do you, do you, uh, Chicago Cubs. Oh, you're a cubby. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I know my you told life. me that, but I'm sorry to hear that. But, uh, <laughs> my whole life. Chicago Cubs, Chicago Bears. Oh, so. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. You've really drank the Kool-Aid then. This is official. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is, so a little bit about you, you work in the grocery industry, yes. right? Okay. Yes. I'm not going to mention your employer or anything like that. And so take me back to the 27th. I know Tyler was home with the kids. Okay. Uh, all of them, by the way, right? Yes. I mean, I'm not going to mention ages or names or anything like that, but all of the kids were there. Okay. Correct. And walk me through, you were at work and you get the dreaded phone call. Yeah. Yeah. So walk us through uh, that the 27th. We're into 203 days now. Yeah. Um, it's Okay. Remember your job is to breathe. Okay. <sighs> I know. I know. We talked about this. So. Uh, Great. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to listen. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I had to be at work by 1230 p.m. that day. I was scheduled to work until 9 p.m. Um, I was on my eighth day straight. I had just started working this job. Um, I got up. You know, kids were doing their usual stuff. Monkey was on the couch playing his Nintendo Switch. Uh Gave him a kiss, told him I loved him, and I'd be home, and I'd tuck him in that night. And now, that was pretty much his habit pattern, right? Pretty much, yeah. Like, cartoons in the morning, you know. What's his food. favorite cartoon? Blaze the Monster Machines. <laughs> what are those? Oh, they're, they're monster trucks, and they talk, and he loves Paw Patrol, too. And um, what is the other one? Oh my goodness gracious. Boys love trucks, don't they? Yes. Very yeah. much. So does he have does he have does he have a lot of trucks? He has so many monster trucks. Um 
I honestly, between him and his big brother, I think there is at least 500 Hot Wheels cars and monster trucks combined. And now baby sister really loves monster trucks too. <laughs> yeah. So there's. So that. So that. So he's on. Go ahead. Sorry. His favorite monster truck is um, Grave Digger. Oh, yeah, of course. That yeah. big, gigantic green thing that drives over everything, crushes yeah. everything. <laughs> I love it. I took I took our, when Dylan was younger, too, I took him to those, to the, uh, in the arena. And, uh, yeah, I bet you he loves that little monster trucks thing. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. We were supposed to... Uh... It was a surprise. We got, they were coming to Idaho. Um, monster. I'm Dan. sorry. I didn't know that. I apologize. No, it's okay. I didn't mean to be insensitive. I'm sorry. He doesn't even, he doesn't know that we, we bought pit passes and everything. Wow. And because of COVID, we weren't able to go. Um, and then when they came, it was a little bit after monkey had gone missing so we didn't go okay so let's you you're gonna hold on to all that stuff okay yeah hold on yeah. okay sorry <laughs> no 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 and that's the other thing uh with right with with being here you you have nothing to apologize for zero okay your job again is to breathe and be mom okay and my responsibility is to give you the platform and to see about lighting the world up and see how others can help support you and also get you guys, you know, hopefully a lead or information from somebody who may know something uh, to, to hit this find Michael at fruitland.org and, and get that information to the authorities immediately. Um, Okay, so you you his his habits in the morning, uh, monster trucks, a little Paw Patrol, and switch. Now, what what is what exactly is switch? So for us older generation, um... <laughs> still a pup. I remember we've talked already. Go ahead. Uh, a Nintendo Switch is like a. Um... Nintendo DS, or does anybody remember Game Boys? Oh, yeah. So it's it's a very advanced version of that. That's the best way I can explain it. Like you put little cartridges in. Um, you can go online with it, um, but it was merely uh, Minecraft, Super Mario, a um, couple other games. It, was he good at Minecraft? And I called that Minecraft, to be honest with you, because I don't understand it, but I, the kids love it. I don't know. <laughs> but it goes so fast, and these kids get that dialed in. Oh, and they build these cities in these, it's just amazing. And I'm like, we have thousands of Legos. Yeah. Why don't you build that with all the Legos we have? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, D Man was into that, and it was like, you're serious? What is this stuff? And I don't yeah. understand it. Mom, play, play with us, please. Here, here. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, I have, mm -mm, no. Well, millions of kids are doing it, right? Yeah. They're all over the place. So <laughs> they, and that's his shirt, right? He was wearing that little Minecraft shirt so far. Yeah. Okay. He loves Minecraft. Um, I think it's really a lot to do with his big brother being so into it. So, okay. So that so you see him and you guys are chatting it up. What are you guys talking about that day? If you remember. What he was playing. He was playing Super Mario. And do you have to go? You stay. We're at school. We're go or we're going to the park. And he said I had to go to work. He said, Don't go to work today. You stay home. Play with me. He said, Daddy's home today. Mommy will be home tomorrow. Um, okay. I'll see you tonight and I'll tuck you in. I love you. And he gave me a kiss. I love you too, Mama. 
I kissed Tyler. Kiss buggy. Told the other kids bye. So you guys rotate, right? Like any other parenting family, two parent families, both working. You rotate between babysitting and work. And I'm assuming your schedules, you know, have uh, correlated that to make that happen, right? Right. But we have had um, to have a babysitter um, before. Okay. Uh, we were just getting it established. Like I said, I had just started that job. Um, okay. We were getting our, stab our schedules correlated and everything like that. Um, so there was a few hours, like two, I know, an hour and a half to three hours um, that we would cross over. Okay. So not very long. And they were in our home. Okay. And stable jobs, no, no, you know, domestic issues in your family or no, no red flags, uh, you know, over at that end, right? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. And you know, that's, I've, um, it's interesting how our children, uh, just know us, right. As parents, okay. what, what, um, when, what time was it about when, when you left in the morning to go to work? Oh, it was probably at least by 12, 15, because I had to be there by 12, 30 and depending on the traffic it's about 30 minutes okay and was that a standard eight hour shift that day potentially um okay and then um did you or tyler get up first if you remember that morning Me. yeah we hear the <laughs> you know that's typical right us guys were like you know, give me another half hour you know you 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 gals are going 200 miles an hour <laughs> even before you get out of the, you know, get out of the room. So, yes, <laughs> so there was nothing, uh, nothing unusual in his behavior or um, anybody, you know, the other kids were they all, you know, no sickness, you know, with COVID going around or anything like that. Everything is kind of, you know, business as usual. Yeah. Teenager on a phone, teenager yeah. or preteen on laptop um everybody in their noses and their devices uh okay everybody make sure you eat you know it's getting close to lunchtime i love you all i'll see you tonight <laughs> I, I love that little video of him making cookies with you around the holiday times yeah. did he have a routine in the morning that you know, you kind of kept him to, uh, as a mom. And I can tell that you're a really good mom. You know how I know, right? I'm a, I'm a trained observer. <laughs> the fact that you let him wear a, a mitt. And then as he was reaching in to pull the cookies out, you not only guided him. Okay. But I saw you move your hand away from the, his hand away from the heat okay that is a very in tune mama okay uh that is that those little gestures like that as simple as they are even back when you guys made those cookies together okay not only showed me a little bit for you know my opinion about your personality but it also showed me how protective you are of, of, of all your children i know it applies to all your children but you know you could really see that that consideration and that sensitivity to him uh you're a mom you're a mom you're a boy mom at that moment yeah. okay a hundred percent okay and so that morning did he have a routine that you know the you know anything he liked to eat or was it you know, uh, Tyler would get it, you know, later on as things progress through the day, if you remember. And, there, and there's no right or wrong answer, obviously. He had Pop-Tarts. Oh. Good. <laughs> he had Pop-Tarts. I didn't remember that much because he had a half-eaten one still on the coffee table when he was laying on the couch. 
and his glass of milk. And I said to make sure that he finished it and put the cup in the sink so Buggy didn't get it. Okay. Okay. So, so business as usual. For, yeah. For <laughs> okay. Pop tarts. And so uh, tell me a little bit about, let, let's talk a little bit about his personality. Hmm. Okay. So what, what would you want the world to know about Monkey? He's happy. He's amazing. He's kind. He's busy. He's, oh, he's so smart. So smart. Yeah, um, tell me uh, to share that. He, his, 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 um, how do I say this? His language, his, uh, what's the proper word? Excuse me. <sighs> He's so inquisitive about everything in the world. He wants all the information. He wants, Mama, what's this? Mama, explain this to me. Mama, I want to know. Yeah, he, he was even asking questions about not only the amazement of making cookies, but was, you could just see the inquisitiveness in him, you know, about wanting to get in there and, and figure it out. It, what else about it? He wants to be he wants to be a part of everything, everything that anybody's doing. He likes to turn wrenches with me. Like, what do you like even from when he was, you know, two years old, he was I was fixing a wash machine and he was right there next to me. And I had to figure out, you know, okay, here I'll give you this wrench and sitting there um trying to fix stuff with me. He he wants the knowledge. He's always He's so much fun. He just always wants to be a part of everything. Any engineers in your family? What was your dad in the Navy? Was he uh, an engineer? He was, a, he was a jet engine mechanic and a... Um, ah, a fixer. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that DNA. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh his just his joy and his happiness and his love is I don't know how I can explain it because you, you just you feel it it's <laughs> I don't care how bad of a day you could possibly be having but if you're around monkey I guarantee that that day will be a little bit brighter no matter how bad the day i promise yeah i i you can see in his countenance that joy that joy and so what are the th what are the things that i i know he you know you gave him the nickname monkey for, <laughs> for a reason Right. Mm -hmm. So walk me, walk us through that. Um, well, when it was in my belly, it felt like he was hanging off of my ribs <laughs> and beat the ever living business out of me for months before he started crawling or walking. He was climbing over baby gates <laughs> When he started crawling, he was climbing on tables, hanging out in windows, um, on everything you can. Oh, my goodness. Once he started crawling, it was game over. Like, in everything, everywhere. There's no no baby gate, no door, no nothing. Like, you are going 24-7. <laughs> He's just all of his energy. Um just like a monkey, um, all over everything, constantly going, constantly busy, <sighs> curious about everything. Um, How old was he when he started walking? If you he was 13 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 
when, you, <laughs> when you were when he had the the runway to 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 go how was he when uh like you take him you know like or our kids when we take them out in public you know and they're that young and they're just you know they're they figured out how to walk okay uh how when was it that he didn't want to you know you put your hand out to try to hold them and they they're like no no i'm doing this myself without saying it right of course 18 19 20 months uh is that about the time period? I mean, pretty much normal like with your, uh, you know, measuring against your other children, or was he a little bit more rambunctious in terms of, I want to go. Um, definitely. Yeah. Cause I'm putting buggy right there right now. And we're a little bit past that. So, and she's in that phase. So definitely I would say about 18, 19 months. Okay. And, I'm going. And, <laughs> and measuring him, measuring him off now in terms of, you know, his development and his, and his growth. Okay. Uh, when did he start to, in your opinion, as mom kind of figure out that he has a little more independence, um, in his development compared to your other children that you've, you know, that you've raised. Oh, goodness. I would say probably about two and a half, honestly, like a okay. little bit older than his little sister. Um, okay. Just very, <sighs> hence the nickname monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, by no means am I a child development expert or anything like that, but you know, I've, we've raised four kids and, you know, I get the fact that kids, every one of them, every one of their personalities is different. Yes. And, you know, I see them, you know, some of our kids, all of us do that, you know, they get through this developmental stage and, you know, some, some go quicker than others. And, you know, with his little personality, everything we're seeing and learning about him, I mean, when you watch those videos of him, I mean, they are pure joy. They, I mean, this little guy is a firecracker. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and and the world is is lit when he's in the room. I mm -hmm. mean, and uh, you know, I can see those dynamics of brothers and sisters going. Well, that's that's monkey. Okay, and was that pretty much how it is? And yeah, with, that's how it is. Okay. That is how it is. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, monkeys older siblings are like they'll humor him you know they'll play they'll play but he has a lot of energy and you know well teenagers <laughs> yeah, so they're not really playing they're keeping up yeah <laughs> <laughs> right like, and okay, we're gonna give mom five minutes here we go you know or but um no i just they love his energy the same you know um is he an inside little guy or an outside little guy outside okay and and ex in the past uh now i know i know you know a lot of the the details here uh and i'm you know stuff we're not gonna you know put out on youtube right i yeah. mean but other my, what i mean by that is you know we know that uh he was last seen uh in the neighborhood right? Correct. By three separate neighbors in terms of he went up to their houses. Okay. Correct. Uh, Fruitland police department has reported over, you know, collecting over 60 uh, video management systems, including some stuff from doorbells and, you know, supermarkets and, you know, gas stations and that kind of stuff in the, in the general area. Give, give the public uh, an idea of some of the geographic surroundings uh, of your neighborhood, okay? And why it's so complicated in relationship to, um, you know, some of the things going on in this investigation. Help us understand some of those dynamics uh, about your name, just your neighborhood uh, as an example. You told me about the dirt road that, you know, circles around. I explain to the audience in the world, 
you know, some of those dynamics. I don't know if a lot of people understand what exactly the terrain is all about. So we have a pretty flat land area around our home. We are surrounded by um, cornfields, sugar beet, and alfalfa. Um, the street that we do live on is you can enter from two different streets, but it is fed in. Our neighborhood is fed in as, as well as other neighborhoods across the street, but there's one way in and one way out. Okay. Now, there are dirt roads. There are farm roads that go through. And the one that is by our home goes in a circle. Okay. So now. So if somebody comes in, they literally have to go in a circle to come out. Or on, if they, they, they were another? using that dirt road, if they were you, if, if that's the road they chose to use, they would drive in a circle. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Why is that so important to understand from your perspective as mom? Because it would have been noticeable in my opinion. Okay. If somebody decided to take that road, if, if somebody decided to take that road, it would have been noticeable. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have gotten out that way. Okay. Um, the one road that does feed in and out of the neighborhood. Now, there is a cliff that goes down and it leads into other farmland. And there is another dirt road. There has been said you know, about the Snake River. Okay. Um, which they have searched. Yep. So Snake River is for people that don't know, that's, that's a very, you know, infamous river that runs not only through Idaho, it goes through Wyoming. And, uh, I mean, it, it's a, it's a very, it's an active river too. In the, in, uh, when the snow melts. I mean, it's, it can be it's a very dangerous river. It's a very dangerous river. So, but how, what's the distance geographically from your, you know, home? You know, now the authorities know that he walked out of that house. Correct. Okay. Right. Okay. So we, we know that that's factual. Yes. Okay. So that said, a, a, the river, you know, it was a crucial piece of uh, potential uh, early on in the investigation. Mm -hmm. okay. So how far was that river, is that river, uh, from your house approximately? And just a guesstimate. We're talking acres, acres. Okay. And but, highway. Right. So he's got a lot of obstacles to, to that he would have to, you know, navigate uh, to right. get down to that water, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so go ahead. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just no, wanting to make sure people understood what that terrain is all about. Yeah. Um, the neighborhood, it's a quiet neighborhood. Um, the houses are pretty close together in our specific neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like you said, he was seen knocking factual on yep. neighbor's doors. Um, and and Tyler's he, there. Tyler's there, by the right, for the record, for everybody, correct. with your other kids. So yes. this isn't just, you know, Mikey's walking out of the house. There's a lot going on in the in around that time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so so, around dinner time, after nap time. Um, yep. And the, and the older kids are there and, and Michael you know, finds his way out of the house. Where, what, where is the point of exit? Uh, you guys, uh, the authorities think he uh, made it out where the garage door, if I, if I, if I remember right. So it's really hard to get out the front door. Okay. The front exit, and you can hear it. 
um, okay. and it has a screen door. Right. Uh, typically during the summer, there are um, double Dutch doors in the dining room. Okay. And there's a just a latch handle. Yep. We'll leave that on. You know the when the curtain drawn and kids can go in and out that way. Okay. Because and it's how? What's the temperature that day? 103 okay. degrees. Yeah, it's like hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I no. So, um, for nobody to have noticed him or hear him, he would have had to gone out that door, which is typical for the kids going in and out, and then gone around in, through the backyard into the garage and out the side garage door. I say side garage door, not the big garage door, but the the other door leading outside the front of the house. Okay, so is your backyard fenced in? Yes, sir. So that double door goes into the backyard, mm -hmm. and then so he would have had to come around and go through the garage and then go out the side garage door. Correct. Okay. And, and how many times in the past has he done that? Once. Okay. And where did you find him? Grandpa found him halfway down mm. the street. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you, <laughs> right. So this is important to understand, right? And from, you know, his, his past behavior, okay, is indicative of future behavior, okay, potentially, especially with a little rascal like monkey here in terms of, you know, he's a thinker. Mm -hmm. He's, he's a you know, what, what I would call somebody who wants to know how things work. And once they figure them out, okay, he was the young man, I would bet that you put all the door handle, uh, you know, doodads on to prevent the little ones when they're real young. Yeah. You know. Pointless. Yeah. Right. Cause he would, he would, <laughs> he would beat them. Right. Point. The shelf, yep. you know, the doors on the cabinets and the little thing he'd, st he'd probably studied it and correct me if I'm wrong and, you know, figured out, Oh, this is how that works. Okay. I'm in. He had to see okay. it one time. <laughs> exactly. Especially the cupboards, especially the cupboards. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So that day there's the belief that he goes out the side door, comes around, goes through the garage and he's out front which he has done in the past. Correct. Okay. All right. So he's, and then there are three neighbors that report seeing him. And so he's outside. Yeah. He's outside. Okay. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about risk continuum. Okay. And this is what we talked to, talked about just a little bit ago. Okay. Remember the L that I talked yeah. about? Okay. Mm -hmm. Situation, environment, circumstance, low, medium, high. Okay. Because of his age and because of his ability to adapt. Okay. Then there is, he's on the medium to high risk, uh, part of that continuum. Okay. If he's over here on the low side, that would be more consistent with somebody familiar to his house, his environment, those kind of situations. Okay. Right. I.e. he disappeared in the house, for an example. Okay. But because he's so monkey, okay, mm -hmm. then that puts him at a higher risk of when he's outside of predatorial behavior, meaning he becomes potentially uh, you know, more, it becomes closer to an abduction and somebody who sees this as an opportunity to strike. Okay. So there's a higher probability in monkey's case that he was a victim of opportunity, i.e. potentially abduction. Okay. And that all the statistics, all of the information leads that way. Okay, now you are you comfortable here still? Because I know we talked about this earlier, but I, I, I want you just to breathe because I know how hard this is, and I'm Breathing. so sorry. Okay, but I want the world to understand mm -hmm. that this is important to recognize here. Okay, that 
the authorities, including the card team, the FBI's card team is, they spent a couple of weeks up there, uh, with you guys. And all of this information has, you know, leaded, leading the authorities to, you know, evidence of potentially, you know, an abduction here. So that means he, you know, he was taken okay, off of the street. Okay. And so this is why it's important to squash, you know, craziness on, on the, the social media. And I think that's why the chief uh, made a comment about that social media can be very helpful and important. Okay. But it needs to be a clarity of focus. Okay? I'm reading the chief statement here. Um, and let me see what he says about that. Social media can be a great tool, but sadly can also be a hindrance to sharing accurate information. Okay. So if there's a development in this case, the chief says, I will notify you if the information is on Facebook, social media, and it doesn't come from me or the Fruitland police department, it needs to be considered as suspect. Rumor, speculation, innuendo complicate our investigative efforts and we really appreciate the community support in this. So the, it, it goes back to creators being responsible with factual information about what's going on here to help find your little boy. And you have my assurance that this is one platform that will do that. Okay. And so let's go back to the the... Okay, we know how potentially he got out of the house. And I say potentially because, you know, I'm not the investigator, okay? Right. They're, they do what they do, okay? Now, he's outside. He's, he's, there are three potential contacts, okay? And now that puts him how far away from the house where, um, you know, the direction he was traveling. Which direction was he traveling? Towards the river or away from the river? Away from the river. Okay, away from... So he was going back the other way? Yes. Okay. And so there were a couple of cars in play. Uh, the authorities haven't released any information uh, about all of that, but other than there was a blue Dodge and a white Honda Pilot. But, but at some point, you know, they may get into information about uh, those two cars. One of them... You had mentioned, I heard on another channel that uh, it was on Josh's channel, by the way, on the, the lab. Love that guy. Okay. He's a, he's, he's a good guy. Okay? He's, very he's, he's very, he's, a, he's got a good guy. He's got a good heart. Okay. And, and so that car has been pretty much eliminated, correct? The, the blue, the blue Dodge. The blue Dodge Avenger, yes. Okay. And we'll wait to hear what the authorities say uh, about uh, the white Honda. Okay. Right. And those were all from part of that video management uh, grab that they have because uh, they said, the chief said he's, they've grabbed a, uh, essentially over 60 different video files. Yeah. So, and I think that's probably just the tip of the iceberg, to be honest with you, you know, potentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll find, we'll find out at some point. <laughs> when you're ready and they tell you, then they tell us, i.e. the world then we'll know. Right. Okay. okay so um, he's headed that way, which puts him at that, you know, that potentially targeted uh, situation there where he's an uh, opportunity. Um, yeah. So what do you, what do you, how are you getting through that piece of the puzzle potentially here? How are, what are you doing to take care of one yourself take care of Tyler and him take care of you and the kids and just all of the family stuff. Well, while doing what you do, how are you doing this? Take every day, step by step, um, one foot in front of the other, um, supporting each other. Just trying yep. to stay strong. 
Yeah. And some people, you know, people, uh, you know, they say, well, where's the husband? Well, there's, there's, there's what there's called, uh, my Karen calls it the John Walsh effect. Okay. Uh, you know, he's not dodging anybody or anything. Okay. And I want to make that clear for the record for people. Okay. And the, the, when John Walsh, uh, when Adam disappeared, remember it was his wife who was the last one with him. And Adam disappeared in six seconds. Okay. When O'Toole, who the, the bad guy was. Okay. He was looking for Adam to come out of that. Not, not necessarily knowing he was going to come out of that store, but the security guard kicked him out. Out of, out of that store. And there was the bad guy right there. And the rest is history. But John Walsh kept his wife out of the media because of all of the trauma she was experiencing. And, you know, I know you two, you guys have been talking and, um, and I know he's trying to figure out, you know, other things that, what could I have done differently and all the other stuff. So there's a lot of movements, moving parts here behind the scenes, guys, that I want you aware of so that, you know, we are considerate to this family. Okay. This is a total different scenario than others that we've you know, been involved in. Okay. So getting that out there and, and I'm, I'm glad you let me do that. Okay. I appreciate it actually. Um, getting that out there, the, the authorities are in full 100% mode. Um, you're at work. Tell walk us through what that scenario, what happens. I called around four o'clock on my lunch break. Um, Tyler had put Buggy down for a nap and Monkey was on the couch playing the switch. They had come inside from playing outside after I left for work. Front yard or backyard if you know. Backyard, always backyard. Um, the front yard is when we go for walks. Okay. Always supervised. See, that's critical because that's a couple hours before. Yeah. So again, he has this pattern of safety, i.e. backyard. Okay. Go ahead. Um, it was a quick call. Uh, hey, how's everybody doing? What's going on? What's everybody up to? Did you eat? You know, mom stuff. All right. Um. I love you. I will see you tonight. I'll be home to tuck you in. Love you too, Mama. Tyler called me at 7.05. I thought it was 7.04, but phone records, apparently. <laughs> yep. um, called me at 7.05 p.m. and said he couldn't find Michael. And I was dealing with a customer at the time and I, where I work, I'm very hands-on on what I do. Um, I put, I kind of blew it off. Like, oh, go check in the bedroom underneath the bed back behind the wall. Mm -hmm. Like hide and seek. Uh, right. Which is taught in every police academy. <laughs> so go ahead. Um, kept him on the phone, put my phone in the pocket, dealt with his customer a little bit longer, picked up the phone and said, well, and it just stopped. The world stopped. The fear in Tyler's voice, the, he was screaming for him saying he couldn't find him. He couldn't find him anywhere. He wasn't anywhere in the house. He wasn't anywhere in the yard. He was yelling down the street. That was, he was, and a coworker had seen me and apparently I must have looked like a ghost because I just stopped. Um, it just seemed like the whole world stopped. Did he say at that point, if you recall, did Tyler say how long he'd been missing up until the time he called you? 
No, not okay. at the time. It was just pure panic and fear. Okay. Had had nine one one call been called yet? If you know. No, he called me first. Okay. 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 Tyler called them. Yes, Tyler called nine one one. Okay, and because he he's in like full on dad yeah. mode, I can't find my boy. Yeah. Okay, and then he calls you, which is normal. To, I can't find you know monkey, i.e. your mom. Where would he be? Okay, and you tell him to go search all these other places, and nothing. Nothing. Then what happened? I asked a coworker to go get my counterpart, um, the but or yeah, the counterpart, um, to please tell him I have a family emergency. And I stepped in the office, and I just kind of, I kept, I had Tyler on the phone, and I could hear him screaming for Michael, and I could hear him screaming monkey, I could hear him screaming Michael, and I just, I kind of stood there. I just, I didn't know what to do. And he told me, my coworker, he's like, go. And I kind of snapped too and ran. I grabbed my purse. I ran out the store. I ran to my vehicle and I drove as fast as I could. I wanted to plow through cars that I got stuck at a red light. And when I drove into the neighborhood, there was already a police car at the splash pad at the park. And when I pulled up into our street, I didn't even park in our driveway. I parked in the middle of the street. I threw in, a, I didn't even turn the engine off. Um, grandpa was, had just gotten home a few minutes before me and he was in his truck headed out on the dirt road, going through the fields or headed to the fields. Tyler was our, um, had already been with our other vehicle driving around neighborhoods, um, down to the splash pad, down to the park. Um, now the older kids are with the younger children, right? I mean, in terms of your daughter, you you have a a younger daughter, and and you have a yes, a teenager. So it's not like Tyler left the kids at home with nobody. And no, know, he didn't leave our two year old to go. No. Um, yeah, that's where I'm going here, so that people don't misunderstand what the facts are. Okay. 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 So walk us through, walk us through now. Grandpa's down going dirt, dirt roads. And then what happens? The cops are already looking for him, by the way, uh, when he's at the splash pad. Is that, is that what you're saying? When Tyler was at the splash pad? No, no, no. When you said you passed a cop car at the oh, splash yeah, they pad. Were our, yeah, they were already here. Yeah. Like when I got here. Got here. And yes. that was within your what fifteen minute drive from work, approximately. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Okay, so how that unfolds, right, is when that nine one one call comes in, and as soon as he Tyler gives a description, then that's put out on the radio, and immediately somebody goes to the house, but the other responding units go into what they call a grid search, okay, mm -hmm. and they start looking for areas that children would congregate and or potentially want to play okay? right. and that's probably why he went right to the splash pad um, and so that search began almost immediately the once that 911 call came in is that would that be accurate yes and the police station is probably about a block and a half from our home really yes, okay sir. so this is yeah so they were on the on the ball quickly yes okay then what so you get home cops are there already they're already starting to look uh what do you remember what happens next i drive down to the splash pad i'm screaming um like crazy for michael i jump out um of the jeep and i'm yelling for michael and there were some there were people at the splash pad and before I could even ask, they were like, we haven't seen a little boy. I was like, you haven't seen a blonde haired, blue eyed little boy. Like, no, we haven't, you know, we told the officers we haven't seen a little boy. And I just, I drove back up into our neighborhood. Um, I had called my daughter because, okay, I did, sorry. My okay. oldest actually did leave. 
Okay. The home. She, a friend picked her up. Mm -hmm. um, but this was like during the like ordering dinner type time. Okay. Um, I had called her because I was like, have you seen Monkey? And she's like, no, mom, I didn't see Monkey. And I needed her home. I needed all of them right where I could have eyes on them at all times. I I drove to the end of ninth. Then I there were people everywhere, people asking me, you know, what can we do? What do we do? I drove the vehicle back to our house. I drove the Jeep back to our house. I just got out on foot. Um, apparently I drove the Jeep to the splash pad. I I'm parked you it there. Remember. Nope. Yeah, you know that that trauma, that shock <laughs> of that event. Okay. I, I can't tell you how I, not to compare anything, but I can't tell you how I got out of Disneyland when I found out my son passed. I don't remember. Okay, so that makes total sense to me, what you just said. Okay, and, but a question I, ha I have for you on that, on that to, to dovetail into what you said, is what in your mama's instinct brought you in retrospect now to the splash pad why why did you head that way right away if you know and there's no wrong answer by the way <laughs> okay. because monkey is a very very social little boy he uh, loves people he loves he'll he he just yeah he he's that little guy that will curiosity come over and say what's that yep Okay. Or, hi, how are you? I'm yeah. Monkey. Yeah, yeah. Chat, mm -hmm. They'll chat you up for days. Mm -hmm. I know those little guys. <laughs> um, so that was your instinct to go right to where you feel, okay, I know him. I'm headed that way. Yep. Okay. And that was oh. actually where Tyler first went to look. Um, oh, Tyler went there as well. Yep. Okay. He That's is, important information. He, Yep, mm -hmm. he was seen on, this is how I know, um, well, the police have seen every which way we weren't walking, driving Yeah. Um, during that time frame. So, yeah. which has kind so, of been helpful because I still don't even remember. And that's probably why I should not have been driving. Well, that's okay. I mean, Nor Tyler. This, <laughs> this is Mikey. I mean, then and Monkey. I mean, it's, you have it's you do you do what every normal parent does when the worst nightmare potential is in front of them and early on you're not thinking you're just reacting yeah uh, and this is what happens right you're yes. you're reacting to okay i got to find him i mean imagine right i mean it, it's pure panic and it's it's like total fear and you know, you, you did what you had to do and, and, you, and right now, and so far you're doing it right. And your job is to continue to just take deep breaths and, you know, process this. And it's, it's your job to keep him in the public's eye. Okay. And, and it's hard, it's hard, it really but, is. <laughs> but you're doing it, you're doing it. Okay. And, and I commend you for that. And, and it's not like something you want to do. It's something you're now in a position that you have to do. Okay. Because if he hears your voice or sees your face in any way, shape or form, and he's in an environment that, you know, he, you know, whatever. Okay. We want him to know that you're there. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're there. Okay. Yep. Yes. And you've been doing a heck of a job doing just that. So you, you hang on, right. Just keep, keep plowing forward and, and trust and not only in God, but trust in yourself and trust in the authorities to let them do what they do. Okay? And you become the voice of, of reason and the face of, of monkey out front and we keep him out in the world 
The world has to come to know this little boy. Yes, they do. And they will. Okay? They will. <laughs> They're going to come to know him. Okay? And I, I, you know, they, I want them to know personally f- from, you know, this conversation, what his little spirit's all about. Okay. And then we want to make sure that if anybody has any information uh, about this case, there's the info, the, the trail going on right there. Find Michael at fruitland.org and call the authorities, call the authorities at the Fruitland police department. I want to make sure I get the right number here. Uh, I've got a couple of them, but so I'm going to put this one. Two zero eight six four two six zero zero six extension zero. Okay, hang on for a minute. I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, I'm glad. Thank you for doing that. I'm gonna hang on. I'm gonna put it on the banner. Okay, that's going by. Stand by. Okay, what's the number again? Two zero eight. Two zero eight. Six four two. Six four two. Six zero zero six. Six zero zero six. Extension zero. Extension what? Zero. Okay. Extension. Or if you see him, call nine one one. Yeah. Well, that's the first thing. Yeah. Right. Call nine one one immediately. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, student. Um, that is that is the first thing. Correct. Call nine one one immediately. Okay. So now I've just updated this. Okay. Two zero eight six four two six zero zero six extension zero. Call nine one if you see him immediately. I'm going to leave this running. Thank you. Through this whole conversation. So as people share this across the world and all their social media platforms. This is uh, the information that we want out there. Okay. All right. So you're at the splash, you make it home. um, And then uh, what do you recall? What, what happens next? Um, I called my boss, I think about 817. Um, There were already neighbors and community members out um, looking for him. And she said, okay, what's your address? And I'm going to post it online. And she, I was supposed to close down that night. And she went and took care of that and was here quite quickly and a, a you know, we're small communities. Um, it, it spread like wildfire. And out in the fields, um, through the parks, <sighs> everywhere, everywhere you could possibly think of. Um, there were so many cars, um, four wheelers. I think somebody even brought their horse out at one point. Um, Just people were lining the streets. I mean, I don't know if you remember Halloween when you were a kid. I did. Okay. Multiply that by 100. Okay. It was, uh, everybody came, That the Fruitland community sounds like just an amazing uh, area. It really is. Yeah, to, and it is, and and I know the chief is. It's hit him pretty hard. You know, he he lives in that area with his kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're motivated to, yeah. and and they've they called in everybody. I mean, I I can't believe the amount of, um, you know, thirteen law enforcement agencies right. From, I mean, almost immediately within twenty four hours. Yeah. Uh, the FBI card team showed up, uh, the field office sack, uh, from the FBI, I think Sullivan is his name. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the PD, you, you even had search and rescue teams with multiple dogs yes. from across the United States. Uh, even as far as South Carolina, they brought in a specialty dog. Yes, they did. It was, um, 
pretty amazing. And, you know, all of this uh, has impacted not only the community and the world, but at the same time, it's, I know what happens because I've been there. Okay? You as a family are, you know, basically kept in a container. Uh, I eat what I mean by that is, you know, the cops are like, you know, Hey, we, we got to get data here. We got to get information. And there was some discussion about an Amber alert. And I know that's been kind of a, you know, a sticking point for a lot of citizens, a lot of people. Um, but at some point, you know, there are decisions that are made uh, that may have wanted to have been made by the investigating agency, uh, but they get overridden through bureaucracy. Okay. Sure. So at the end of this, in retrospect, there's going to be a debrief when, when all of this is over. Okay. And I'm saying that in a very optimistic, positive when way. When Michael comes home. That's correct. Okay. For you and for the, for the community and for, for little monkey. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not going to give up hope on him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, this, but what's interesting is uh, what the agency did is um, because there are so many steps sometimes to Amber alerts that, you know, if, if some bureaucrat doesn't feel that the word fits the situation, okay, then they won't push that button. Okay. And there's always been this thinking of, well, you know, we don't want to desensitize the community. Okay. So an, a case agent is left with one other option and it's what's called an EMA. It's a, an emergency, you know, missing endangered, endangered missing child. Okay. And that is then pushed to the community, i.e. in um, law enforcement terms. It, and it, it's entered into the NCIC or the National Crime Information Center. And so that basically hits every CAD terminal in every police car in the United States. Okay. Right. Now, the plus on that is if, if he's seen, then if he's contacted with a stranger, then that he'll come up in the system. Okay. The downside is because an Amber Alert wasn't pushed, uh, and it hasn't been yet, has it? No, sir. Okay. Well, you know, a little information goes a long way. And if folks can't figure out that a five-year-old uh, is endangered by now, okay, somebody needs to push that button, in my opinion. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I'm not saying it's the agency, okay, because I know it leaves them and it goes into other channels. Yes. Okay. The state police typically is responsible for, you know, assessing that button. Correct. Okay. So, you know, guys, let's, let's figure that out. Right. I mean, let's push the button. I mean, now it's, it's in retrospect, you know, uh, whoever made that decision is going to be looking over their shoulder one day. Okay. <laughs> and we'll just let it take its course right there. I think the agency has responded correctly personally. Uh, I think they're, you know, chief hunt down there. That guy is, he's, he's committed. And so his, is his team uh, to resolving this issue. Chief Huff? Chief Hunt? Huff. Huff? What I call him, Hunt? Yes. Yeah, well, you've you've known me already. So, <laughs> no, I mean, well, we've talked a couple I'll of times. Or it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief, I, if I offended you. Right there, I, it was not my intent. He's, he's um, got, he's got, I've got his back. No worries. <laughs> okay, you got, you got him. Okay, there you go. So... Uh, yeah, J.D. <laughs> Huff, you know, uh, I'm sorry, Chief. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're a great guy, though, I'll tell you that. Um, and so is your team. Uh, they're and amazing. So, yeah, they're good. And, you know, the card team was there. The feds are on it. Uh, you had, you know, all these law enforcement agencies, search and rescue, fire, everybody. They're still 100% committed yes. to to finding your little your little guy. Yep. And 
you know, there are some things I know that, you know, I just know through my own experience that they're probably flushing through. Uh, and so it's natural, you know, to talk about, and the public's, the public's, you know, very wise, right? The first thing they're going to say is go look at all the RSOs. Okay. In the arena. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can assure you they're doing that. Okay. I can, I can assure you of that. Okay. And what, what they need is that one person, just that one person, even if you think it has no value okay, and you saw something or somebody that looked and you believe could be monkey call 911 please please not only for the sake of this this mom and 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 Tyler is his dad okay but f for your own internal sake do the right thing do the right thing this is a little boy he's 5 years old okay 5 years old and every indication right now is he was abducted Every indication is he was abducted. So, you know, we need to respond correctly as a community. We need to find our moral compass. We need to find our moral compass. And, and, and so mom, mom can, can get that, get, get the hugs that she deserves. Okay. We need to do that. Okay. All right. So the investigation kicks into full gear. Um, uh, and you, uh, I, I'm going to go back to the John Walsh effect. Okay. You, you are basically chosen, you know, by the universe to become the voice of your family and, and, and tell the, tell the world. Right. It's not that anybody's hiding or if there's anything behind the scenes. And even at some point, you know, I'm sure they'll see the the reality of that right correct when the timing's right so correct. okay and so we're gonna you know we're gonna fast forward now uh it's been 203 days right july 27th 6 30 p.m okay but for you it's actually closer to noon because you had to go to work. To me, it's been 204. Okay. Okay. You just. Yeah. Cause you, you called, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else, what else do we, do you, do we need to share with the world? That he's loved and he's missed. Michael is missed so much. He has older siblings and a younger sister that he has a family and a community, um, extended family that desperately want him home. We all want him home. And Let him come home, please. Just let him come home safely. And I will forgive. I will do my best. I will please let my baby come home. There is a $50,000 reward, if not more. It's almost 53000 now. Almost $53,000 now. And who's managing that fund? Fruitland Police Department. Okay. So if, if you want to donate to that, to the fund, uh, go on the uh, this website right there, fruitland.org, and uh, find Michael at fruitland.org, and you can donate to that fund. They do not send any money my way or anything like that bring it right to that fund for Michael. Okay. 
And also, uh, if you know of anybody who has changed their behavior lately, just out of the, just, they're just not normal right now. Okay. Call the cops, call 911 Mm -hmm. and just say, you know what? I don't know if this is anything, but would you check it out? Uh, I know the the agency has searched well over 200 homes and properties yep. looking for him. Okay. Uh, they've uh, done a tremendous amount of work. They need leads as always, because anything could be a, a small piece of the puzzle that puts the universe uh, in alignment. What we may think is nothing. Uh, I can speak as a, as you know, an investigator, former investigator, still working active cases, by the way, okay, for the Cold Case Foundation, and it could be a small piece of the puzzle, but it will make the picture. And I think collectively we can do this. I spelled immediately wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That it doesn't count, right? Who cares? This is about Michael and Monkey, okay? And you know that, is, but it does show you my personality of how meticulous <laughs> I, I I've been watching this go by and thinking, well, you made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> so we will help in any way, shape, or form. Help your family. You have a safe place here as I know you do with others, okay? Uh, Your responsibility is to breathe and keep him out front. And that means all national news networks or anybody that comes to you, bounce it off the, you know, the investigators, make sure that everybody's on the same team. And then- I always go to them first. Oh, I know, I know. (laughs) You you had Captain Armstrong vet me. So Mm -hmm. I'm I'm good with this. (laughs) And uh, so I, you know what, I really appreciated that about you because, you know, this is, this is everything in, in your, in your life. And I, I get that. And what did I say? Go for it. Yeah. Make, you know, let's, let's dance. <laughs> I, you know, let, and he called me up and we, we danced and, you know, I said, Hey, this is about Michael. Let's make it happen. And so, um, you know, this, that's why we do this. That's why we do this. Okay. What is something I have not asked you that you feel is in your heart and in your mind is important, uh, information that you would like to share. And then when you're, when you're done, I'm going to give you the very last word here. So I'm going to pull my picture out you're going to have the world in front of you and you say what you need to say. And then at the end of that, I go, I have a tradition that I believe the Aloha spirit is such a positive, um, hopeful feeling. There you go. Okay. And, and I go to the Aloha spirit at the end of every one of my programs and knowing that whenever possible, God will open a door and let us see through that door. And those prayers are needed for your, not only Michael and you and your family, but they're needed for the investigators as well. And I think that Aloha spirit brings that in. Uh, so you get the very last word cause you're mom. And then we're going to go to, to Hawaii right after that, but when we're done, just stay on, okay? That fair? Yeah, it's fair. Okay. Everyone, please, please look at Michael's beautiful face. Look at his beautiful eyes. See our family. See how much love and kindness and joy there is in our family. 
please pray for all of us. Please pray for all the law enforcement that continues to tirelessly search for Michael. And if you know anything about Monkey, if you know anything, please, please say something, please. He needs to come home. It's been too long, please. Thank you everyone for your support. I love you, Michael Joel. We won't give up, baby. I promise you're coming home. All right, you will come home. You see, Mommy, you know. I'm coming to get you, baby. We're gonna find you. I love you. Hard working every day. I'm stressed out. 24 7, babe. No, no timeouts. Wish we could fly away. You and I go to our favorite place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Make special memories together. I'll be your company now and forever. Facing a wall